So guys, um, here we are in my mobile office and I'm about to get going. We're gonna switch over to the Canon EOS M here on the road. But I just wanted to tell you guys a little bit about the shooting modes that I've noticed, uh, some observations that I've had uh, with the Canon EOS M. And if you are thinking about using this for like blogging or maybe some behind of the scenes, kind of shooting uh, you all know how I feel about 3k first of all that's just like my favorite the best quality you could get out of the EOS M is just shooting at 3k at 23 frames per second or maybe just lower the quality to like even though you're in the 3k mode going down to like 2880 resolution and it's basically 2.8k um, but uh, yeah, the resolution is still nice and dandy and you could bump up the frames to 24p Now that is like the best quality you could get out of this camera shooting in those modes, but um, We're talking about vlogging kind of things or longer clips and uh, For that sort of things the 3k mode is not so good Now if you want to use this for longer clips or maybe like a setup like we're doing right now. I'm about to show you the best shooting mode and that is 5K FRTP. Right now I have the, the 15 mil to 45 kit lens. Now this is uh, a little bit tight to, for using with 5K FRTP, does cropping heavily. It's almost resembling the 23mm at 4K. So it's very similar. It's almost like a two-time crop. Not quite two-time, but it's almost a two-time crop. It crops in pretty heavy. Right now, you can see it's about the same field of view. And the cool thing about 5K FRTP is that you do have live preview. It works with the HDMI cable out. And the best part about it is that it helps diffuse some of this more that whenever you have pattern such as in the clothing or in the buildings 1080p even though it's wider is great for vlogging the more is just horrific and as you see in my studio test I'm you about to see uh, definitely 1080p yeah it looks great I know you can shoot in 14 bit but the more is just too horrible so I definitely recommend switching over to 5K FRTP. So with that said, let's switch over the camera, go from our Fujifilm to our EOS M, and let me make sure we are in, yep, yeah, 15 mil, everything looks good, 1 48th of a second. And uh, let me focus on this corner and change our view. So let me make sure we are focused here. Let's just do a really quick test and check this out. This is how I mount this. All right, now we're on 5K FRTP. Maybe I should move this a little bit up. There we go. All right, check this out, guys. So there it is, 5K FRTP goodness. It looks pretty similar, right? Field of view. So this is the 23 mil in 4K. That is 15 mil in 5K FRTP. Now the nice thing about 5K FRTP in 10 bits is pretty much just continuous recording. So I could just leave this thing recording and it's just, that's it, you're on your way. I'm gonna plug in my microphone so we could get better audio because we will be in the car driving and it's gonna get a little bit loud. So hang on a second, let's go ahead and switch that. All right, yeah, everything looks good. So let's go ahead and get out of here. Gotta meet a friend over in the coffee shop. And on my way, we can talk about some uh, shooting modes in the Canon EOS M. So right now we have 5K FRTP, 10 bits. And actually I could still shoot in 12 bit and it's almost continuous. You know, 5K FRTP is pretty much almost continuous shooting. 
um, with 12 bits, but then again, it cuts off around the one minute, two minute mark, maybe five minutes if you're lucky. So I just recommend staying with 10 bit like I am right now, and you should be good to go. 10 bit is definitely gonna record until the car fills up, but that's not the main reason why we wanna shoot in 5K for TP. Again, 5K for TP allows us to get some nice clean footage that doesn't suffer from more and aliasing like the 1080p modes do, but we do sacrifice field of view. It does cropping quite a bit. So that's why um, you should get a nice wide angle such as the 15 mil I'm shooting at right now or better yet use the 11 to 22 millimeter STM lens. Now the reason why I haven't actually uh, bought purchased that lens either even though I want it for like this kind of blogging thing but it's just like the 15 mil is just barely good enough you know it's just just good enough for this feel this field of view is fine for blocking right just mount the camera on the corner of my dashboard and even though i'm driving around it's pretty stable doesn't shake everything is just it works great you know 50 mil is doing the job but again going back to the frtp mode with the with the 5k frtp yeah it just it looks clean very clean and 10 bit 14 bit Again, I haven't really seen much of a difference except with the exception that 14 bit for some reason seems brighter. Like the exposure is just ever so slightly brighter than that of the 10 bit and 12 bit. I have no idea why. If any of you do, do you know why 14 bit just looks brighter than 10 bit? Please let me know in the comment section down below. But regardless, guys, this is like the best setting you could use for blogging or for long record times. Just shoot 5K for TP. If you must shoot in 1080p, I strongly, highly recommend getting yourself a black mist filter like the one I have on right now. It's gonna greatly reduce the moire and the whole color artifact that happens when you shoot in 1080p so definitely i recommend getting that but if you can shoot in 5k frtp like i'm doing right now then definitely go for it and better yet pair that up with that black mist filter you'll be all set to go you're gonna have some nice clean footage it's gonna look really nice um, and here we are guys this is oh wait i forgot my fake rgb light just an LED light with a film strip, color film strip. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, guys, so again, back in my studio here and uh, in 5K FRTP, of course, with the kit lens, a 15 to 45 millimeter lens, wide open at f3.5. Like I was saying, 5K FRTP is good enough for headshots like this, where if you want to use it, as your main YouTube camera. It is possible, but you gotta be careful of a couple of things that I'm gonna talk about right now. And one thing is the flickering. From time to time, actually it's a little bit rarer than that. Uh, just at times you will get a glitch of some sort and that just pops up unannounced. I have no idea when it happens. Only when you're in post, you know that. So to cover up for that i just recommend you shoot a lot of b-roll have a lot of b-roll shots of if you are talking about outside a trip or something have a lot of b-roll footage of the trip have a lot of b-roll footage of the object you're talking about in this case we're talking about the canon eos m so i could just slap on some b-roll on top of this footage as i'm talking to you because the audio it will still be here but then again you might have glitch video so you could just slap the b-roll on top of it of what you're talking about now speaking of audio that's another thing that i noticed there were a couple of times that i had the audio just mess up during the shoot a couple of times one time i was shooting out some some b-rolls outside in the food festival and 
the audio just went crazy. It was just like a his. I don't know what happened. I wasn't using any external mic. It's just something Magic Lantern just goes crazy. I don't know what happens. It's unexplainable, but you got to be ready for that. So a lot of YouTubers use external recorders, which actually that is the safest way to go about shooting more professionally is always have external audio. That is just the best way to go. I'm lazy, so I like to mix them together. The video, the audio, put it all in one place, but that is not the safe way to do it. You've been warned, but it is possible. So hopefully after post, if all went well in DaVinci Resolve, this video is uploaded and you are watching this later in the future and enjoying the high quality of shooting uh, YouTube headshot in all raw DNG goodness. So definitely 5K for TP, we're able to get continuous recording. We cut off a lot of the more We don't suffer from that as opposed to 1080p. And really quick, as I'm talking to you, I'm gonna be showing you again some B-rolls that I shot before. Shooting in 1080p without a diffuse filter, like I'm using right now, you will see a lot of red and green colors in my hair, especially as the light is bouncing, reflecting off my wet look style, my hair, you will see that more red. And it's just horrific, it's really distracting. The pattern of the t-shirts also affect uh, if it's gonna show up or not. Like I told you in the video, using a black mist filter really helps alleviate that problem, but it's not gonna fix it. It's still gonna be slightly there. The quality is gonna be a little bit less than that of the 5K FRTP. But the benefits of shooting with 1080p is that you could shoot at 14 bits and you get all the color adjustment, freedom. You have all that leverage to be able to grade in post freely. But again, 10 bits is not bad at all. Right now, all the flagship cameras are advertising they can shoot internally 10 bit. Just now, you know, we're talking about $3,000, $6,000 cameras that are proud to say they can shoot 10 bit. But here we are with the EOS M recording in 10 bit already for less than $100. I have done other tests shooting with my Fujifilm, the X-H1, and as you all know, this is just a 8-bit camera. I shot in F-Log Eterna, which is one of my favorites. Recently, I've been shooting more and more with Classic Chrome, but um, regardless of what you shoot with, it's still an 8-bit camera, and I have seen the limits. To, for example, behind me, you have that RG, gb light colors you know splash light in the background it's mm, i wouldn't say ugly it still looks pretty nice but just the fading in the colors right here that gradient color is not as smooth as with the eos m and again that's just the benefits of shooting with 10 bits just because you can't shoot in 14 bit with the 5k rtp doesn't mean that limiting down to 10 bit is a bad thing <laughs> It's 10 bit, it's still a lot more than my Fujifilm X-H1 that shoots only 8 bit. So guys, yeah, don't be scared to just let go of 1080p, stick with 5K FRTP. And the reason why I keep praising 5K FRTP is because it is the widest we can shoot with the Canon ESM to get a usable headshot and have the camera still relatively close to me, like I can touch the lens right now. It's still close, but again, we can still see some of the background. Now, if I were to shoot on the other modes, such as 2K, 2.5K, 2.8K, of course, 3K is out of the question. That's just for reroll. Uh, but 2.5K, 2.8K, 2K, those are all continuous at 10 bit. They crop heavily. We're talking about over two times crop. So you basically just gonna see this in your screen and we do not want that, <laughs> definitely. So that's why stick with 5, 5K for TV. If you wanna step by, you wanna get a nice wider shot. And that's it, guys, that's that's all I got for you guys today. I just wanna talk to you guys about the best vlogging headshot for your YouTube setup. You could still use the Canon EOS M. Just remember, have a lot of B-rolls ready. Uh, if you can record externally to your smartphone, blah, 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 
smartphone <laughs> and also record externally to your smartphone so that way you could have a reliable clean audio get a diffusing fi filter now if you don't have money to shout out for a diffusing filter they're very easy to just diy just grab any five dollar uv protector filter lens spray some black paint in the air swing your filter around in the air to catch some of those sprinkles of the paint and there you go you have yourself a black diffusion filter it's actually that simple you could even use hairspray if you want if you don't want to uh, spray paint all over your room anyway guys um that's all i wanted to talk to you guys about today just i was surprised how usable this footage is for just a youtube setup I'm out, guys. I'm just going to keep rambling. I just love talking about this topic. Thank you so much for sticking to the end. Really appreciate all you guys' support and keep the questions coming. I'm going to get back to them as fast as I can. Also, let me know what shooting mode you guys like shooting at. I would love to hear your guys' whole mode setup or the presets that you guys use. Share the wealth. You know, we could learn from one another. But thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.